What up? I'm Bee, and welcome to my channel where we talk about all things true crime and current events. Today we're going to be taking a look at Colleen Ballinger's video titled Addressing Everything. I've been waiting all week to watch this because I wanted to watch it for the first time when I was reacting to it with you. Um, but at this point it has uh, 2 million views roughly. It was posted on May 12th and a ton of people have been talking about it. I'm assuming this is in response to the Colleen Ballinger Stop Lying video that was posted by a former fan of Colleen's and I don't want to say former employee but somebody who she was essentially treating as an employee and we reacted to that together. We talked a lot about the situation and there was a lot of great combo going on in that video because it was a live reaction so I'll leave a card up here. Anyway, because we had so much conversation about who Colleen is, the type of situation that she's in, all that stuff, I'm not going to go into too much about her, although I do know that people have been recently calling her out for uh, problematic tweets, I guess, from the past, saying things like, oh, everybody go R this person for his birthday, and stuff like that. I will say I've seen some tweets talking about how she's a rape apologist and a pedophile, and I don't think either of those things are accurate. I will not be accusing her of being either of those things while we do this reaction. I think they're poorly worded tweets and I definitely think it was weird that she sent lingerie to Adam, but it was a prank. It still had tags on it. I, to my understanding, Colleen never wore it and she sent it to be funny. So while I think that's a poor judgment call, I don't think that justifies calling her either of those words. And so if that's what you're looking for, you're not going to get it here. I'm going to go into this with an open mind because I really do want to hear what she has to say in response to his video. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, I know this is not my typical video that you are used to seeing, but recently some things have come up that I feel like I need to address. And so I just wanted to sit down and have an honest conversation with you and address everything at once. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is something that is weighing the heaviest on my heart right now. A video has resurfaced of my sister and I from 14 years ago. Uh, we are teenagers and in this video we are doing characters that are Latina. And the characters are completely based on racial stereotypes is not funny and it is completely hurtful. I am so ashamed and embarrassed that I ever thought this was okay. I was a sheltered teenager who was stupid and ignorant and clearly extremely culturally insensitive. Racial stereotypes are not funny. They are not a joke and they should never be joked about. A few years later we... Okay, so she's 33. 14 years ago she would have been 19. I think everyone makes mistakes. Like, obviously nobody's perfect, especially not people who are still young like that, but I think... I don't know, like I'm not gonna vilify her for doing it. I don't think it's okay. I, I think it's very racially insensitive, uh, but I don't know if there was any hate behind it and I don't know how harshly I want to judge her. Maybe that's, maybe that's bad on me. Maybe I'm not being, I don't know, as, as proactive and as, you know, I don't know the right word, but maybe I'm not being as angry about this as I should be. But I like to try and consider the general attitude and actual heart of the person when they do something that is racially insensitive or when they've done something like that in the past or even just something offensive in general in the past. You know, if, if I don't know anything else about this person being racist, having these stereotypes and thinking that this is how all people of X race or X religion are, I'm not going to be too harsh on them. You know, like it's not okay. I think she was a little bit too old to not know that that was offensive. But at the same time, 14 years ago, that probably would have been funny to a lot of people. I hate to say it, like, I don't want to justify being insensitive, but it comes up a lot with different tweets and different skits and, like, a lot of the stuff that Shane Dawson used to do 10, 15 years ago. Their internet culture and culture as a whole have absolutely changed, and I think it's very important to consider that when you are thinking about things people did X number of years ago. Because while if she posted something like that today, it would have been 
torn to shreds immediately, that was part of the culture back then. Whether it's right, whether it's wrong, whether it's acceptable or not, it was. And I don't think that makes it okay. Like I said, like it's very insensitive. But this isn't something I'm going to nail her to a cross for. And I'd love to know how you feel pretty much about everything in this, but especially about that because I feel conflicted sometimes, but I really stand in my conviction that I'm going to look at the past and see what was acceptable then, what was being said then. Did this person make this out of hate or did they make it because they thought they could? Did they make it because they thought it would make people laugh and because it most likely did because of what was going on at the time? You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I feel. Realized how stupid and hurtful the video was and we deleted it. Not out of fear of getting caught, but out of fear that someone would find it and it would hurt them because it's wrong. I have grown and learned so much from my ignorant mistakes. As a I do think it's funny that she's wearing like a gray hoodie though. Like, <laughs> no makeup, gray hoodie. I don't think she wears a ton of makeup typically anyway, but it just, she fits the stereotype of the apology video. Teenager and have done everything I can to right my wrongs. Now this video was brought to light right after I had posted a video on my vlog channel last week with my friend Todrick talking about racism and how it is still very much a problem in our world today and how we need to fight against it. People were saying, how dare I talk about racism when I said these things 14 years ago? And to you I say, that is the exact reason why I should be talking about racism and why I should be standing up against it because I was one of the dumb ones who said that stupid thing and grew from it and learned from it and realized how hurtful it could be. And now I wanna right my wrongs and make a difference so that other people don't make the same mistakes that I made when I was a kid. Another video popped up recently that I want- That's decent. Like that's, I think that's a good attitude to have because whether you believe her or not, what she's saying is I did not consider the fact that that would be so hurtful to somebody and it wasn't my intention. And so I made a mistake. I learned from it and now I'm changing. And so I think that's if, you know, if you're taking her at face value, that's literally all you can ask for want to address and it's a video that I filmed 12 years ago where I talk about taking a flight and an overweight woman sat next to me and I talk really negatively about her and it's awful and I watched this clip and I was appalled and shocked that those things were coming out of my mouth 12 years ago because that is not the woman who I am today. I'm such a huge advocate for women and women's bodies and loving every shape and every size and the fact that I talked negatively about someone who was overweight is absolutely disgusting to me. Something else I want to talk about that has been brought up is that when okay. I was three years old I- I haven't seen that video so I can't really make any comments on it but again if this is 12 years ago, I'm sorry, I think you're still growing. Your frontal lobe isn't fully developed until your mid-20s, and she would have been, what, 21, 22 at the time? Again, not something I'm going to come at her for as hard as I might if this was something she said a month ago. You know what I mean? I do want to hear what she has to say about the dog story, though, because I understand that people cope with things using dark humor, but... I don't think that's a story I would have told publicly and in such a lighthearted manner. I was bit by a dog. I needed to go to the hospital. And when my mom told the doctor that a dog had bit me, the doctor said that legally the dog needed to be put down. Now, the clip of me that is circulating from seven years ago is me talking about this situation in a very insensitive way. When in reality, when our dog was put down, I was really upset. And over the years, I have addressed this a few times in videos talking about how guilty I feel, how upset I am that this happened. Still to this day, as a 33-year-old woman, I feel guilty that our dog had to be put down for biting me. But in this clip, I talk about the story in a very dramatic, silly way, because sometimes, unfortunately, I use humor to talk about things that are actually extremely painful for me. And this is an example of that. To anyone and everyone who was hurt or offended by the statements I made when I was younger, I am so, so sorry. I hope you all can see that the person who I am today is so far from that ignorant person I was over a decade ago. And to those of you who might say, well, I knew better when I was that age or 14 14 years ago, I knew right from wrong. I'm so glad that you did because that means that there's one less person making those stupid mistakes that I made. I should have known better and I didn't and I'm extremely embarrassed by that. I'm really hopeful that I can be used as proof that people can change and grow and learn from their mistakes. If you continue to speak up when you see someone doing something or saying something wrong, it can make a difference. As I grew up, I learned that those words were hurtful and I stopped using them. But there are still people in our world currently who are saying racist, homophobic, sexist, body shaming, 
happening things that need to stop. They need to be called out because they can change. I'm living proof of it. And my ignorant words from my past just make me that much more passionate to help the people that my words might have hurt. These things are being brought to light because some people are upset with me for not addressing something that happened a few weeks ago. Someone had made a video saying some shocking and hurtful things about me, and a lot of you wanted me to address it, and I didn't. I didn't address it. Not Someone made a video saying shocking and hurtful things about me. You mean the 17 year old who you had doing your dirty work finally defending himself? Like, hmm? What? Okay, I, let's hear her out. Uh, as far as the stuff in the past, like I said, if she, if I'm taking her at her word, she's grown, she's learned, she's like, hey, I didn't know that this was hurtful, I didn't know that it was offensive, I realize that it is now and I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Like, what there's literally nothing else that you can ask of her like reasonably you know she can't go back and change what she did all she can do is try and get better and i think that we should allow people to do that so as far as the stuff in her past it's not great but again it's in the past and she says that she's changed so we're gonna let we're gonna let her get better we're gonna let her improve would love to know about the whole adam situation though so let's hear it not because I was just ignoring it and hoping it would go away, but because when this person messaged me letting me know they were upset, I responded immediately. I was very shocked and confused. I expressed I didn't know what they were talking about, and I also expressed frustration that they were trying to bring my son's name into their drama. Then I received a message from this person's mother asking me to- Okay, so it looks like these are Instagram messages. Uh, Colleen said, takes advantage of Flynn. What are you talking about? What does Flynn have to do with anything? How dare you bring my son into your drama? I didn't say anything about you. I've never been anything but nice to you. I haven't said one word about you. I'm not going to argue with you or talk smack about you. I wish you well and have always appreciated your support, but bringing my son into your drama is too far, Adam. And then uh, the next message is, this is Adam's mom. It's not nice when your child is brought into things, but if you had read it correctly, you would have seen he wasn't, and it was a comparison that was being made mother to mother. You may now understand. Never speak my son's name again and tell your sidekick the same applies to him. I think this is referring to when Adam was like, how would you feel if somebody did what you're doing to me to your son? From my understanding, Adam was essentially ghosted by her, but it seems that she's claiming she did respond, and uh, let's hear what happened to not speak his name. So I was trying to respect the mother's wishes and the parents' wishes of this 17 year old. But it has gotten to a point where there are so many rumors and lies and speculations going around. I feel like I need to address it. I do have receipts proving the things that I'm about to tell you. However, I feel uncomfortable sharing them because he is a minor. So I'm only gonna be showing you the things that were between adults or things that were already public. The biggest issue that came okay. from his video is that I sent a child underwear and Wow, anyone who heard this out of context and was offended, I completely understand because I would be too. But in this situation, context is everything. So I would like to give you some context to this situation. Four years ago, I did a live stream and in this live stream, I did a giveaway. I was giving away clothes that were unused, tag still on, brand new, that I had just bought that I did not want. One of the items that was in this box was a really ugly pair of underwear. As soon as we pulled them out, Corey and I started laughing and joking around about how ugly they were. Why did I buy these ridiculous underwear? It was so stupid. I just got big old box from Forever 21 and I want to open it up in front of you guys. Maybe I'll send the ones I don't want to you guys. I got a bunch of crop tops. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> the panties, the panties from <laughs> And people started asking for them in the live stream. Who wants that bra? You want the bra? Everyone wants the bra. At the end of the live stream, I was done giving away clothes, and then this boy who made this video about me recently, he asked for the underwear. Yay, we picked people. I think that's enough. Okay. Yeah, boy, my names are not. I don't know. He has to tell me what he wants. What did he say? Is he being <laughs> He said, um, hi, you have ugly clothes, but I want those ratchet panties and bra signed by Corey because he modeled them well. Yeah. <laughs> it was so ridiculous and funny. We laughed about it and I forgot to send them to him. And eventually he tweeted me asking me for them again. I sent them to him. He put them on over his clothes and posted about them. It was like a big joke within the fandom. I did this publicly. That live stream is still up right now. And I've always given out weird random things in live streams. I've given out a taco costume. I've given out old bobby pins, dirty shoes. A few weeks ago, I sent a fan like a single piece of toilet paper. I've always given away weird stuff. And so in my mind at the time,
time. This was no different than all the other weird stuff I send to my fans as a joke. Now, in hindsight, I see how completely stupid of me. I should have never sent that. I don't know what part of my brain was missing at the time that I thought, oh, this is a normal, silly thing to do. I should have realized and recognized how dumb that was and never sent it to him, no matter how much he asked. But it was never a sneaky, creepy, gross thing that I was doing in secret. It was a silly, stupid mistake that now is being blown way out of proportion. He also mentioned in his video, I disagree with the way she's portraying it because that explanation is accurate from everything I have heard. And most people were not like, you're disgusting. Like I said, there have been some people who have been calling her a predator, but most reasonable people are just like, hey, this was a bad call. Like you probably shouldn't have done it. But I think, I mean, from my understanding from the conversations I've had, it's more like, why did you have this kid trying to find drama for you? Why were you telling him about your divorce? Why were you having him run your Twitter account when he was 16? Like, that's more what we care about. The panties were something that definitely got a lot of attention. But I think once most people understood what it was, it it wasn't like we had this huge moral opposition to it. We were like, you know, we get the joke that, that, that at the time you kind of thought it was funny, but you probably should have thought about it afterwards and not sent it because it just looks weird. Even if there was no ill intent, even if it wasn't anything like hidden or sexual, you still shouldn't have done it, you know? And so I don't think that's what people have the most problem with. It's the other stuff. And, you know, we only have like five minutes left of this, so I hope she gets to it soon that his mom was uncomfortable with me, which was surprising and shocking for me to hear because I was always under the impression due to the things he told me and the things that I saw on the internet that she not only was aware of our interactions, but she was very supportive of him being a fan of mine. She commented on a photo of him this year at my show saying how it was such a fun night. She gave him a birthday card when he was 16 with me on it. And he let me know multiple times how much his parents loved me and watched my videos. So this was surprising for me to hear because if I had known that I would have stopped all interactions with him if I ever knew his parents were uncomfortable. Another thing I think is important to address from his video is that he did have access to my Miranda Singh's Twitter account for one day, um, not for years, and I want to just go over how that whole situation went down. Right. There have been some people who said, like, oh, he was running it for years, and he wasn't. He said it was one day. Colleen is saying it was one day. I believe it's one day. Over the years, I've loved asking my fans for advice on what I should post for Miranda videos, Miranda tweets, things like that. Quite honestly, you guys are the funniest people that I know, and I love your advice. I love your input. I've taken a handful of suggestions as to what I should tweet as Miranda from my fans over the years, and he is included in that. I used a couple of his tweet ideas many years ago. They did really well. He was super funny. And since then, he's asked me multiple times if he can help me out with social media again. I always thought that was really, really sweet, but most of the time, I did not engage in those conversations until recently. A couple months ago, he reached out to me and brought up the fact that the Miranda accounts hadn't been as active as they used to be and how he wanted to help me do more social media stuff. So he sent me a whole bunch of edited photos that he had in a folder ready to go for Miranda. He told me about a bunch of funny tweets he wanted to post and he let me know that he had experience working in social media. He really vetted for himself and because I'd known him for so many years, I was over exhausted and I don't have all the time I used to have to run all my social media. I thought, you know what, this might be a good situation to test run this and see if this could work out. This wouldn't be the first time I had hired a fan. I love hiring my fans for many reasons. One, they're super freaking talented. Two, they know me better than anybody. And three, I love supporting their dreams and passions in any way that I can. I've hired my fans to design merch. I've hired fans to go on tour with me. I've hired fans to edit things for me. And how hiring my employees works is I usually do a little test run to see how it goes. If it goes well, then I hire them officially through my company and they are paid legally through the corporate. It was no different for him. I wanted to do a little test run. If it went well, then I wanted to hire him. So I gave him access to my account and he started tweeting stuff for me. And pretty quickly, there was a tweet that was posted that was problematic. This was my fault. He sent me a very long list of a ton of different things he wanted to post and I did not look over it closely enough. I did not review it closely enough. I remember the moment when I saw all of these things, I was breastfeeding my son and I kind of just scrolled through and was like, yeah, go for it, have fun, I trust you. And when he posted it, I put zero blame on him at all. It was my fault. I knew better than to let someone else tweet for me. I should have reviewed closely every single thing that was going to come out of Miranda's mouth. I let him know that I loved him. He did 
did a great job. It was my fault, not his. I publicly apologized for the tweet. I deleted the tweets that were posted that weren't posted from me. I let him know that I was upset, that people were disappointed in me. And then he said he logged out of the account and that was the end of it. That was the last I heard from him until he sent me the message saying he was really upset with me. And that is when I then responded and got the message from his mom. I care about him so much, just like I care about all my fans that I've interacted with over the years. And I wish him nothing but success and happiness and love. I don't know what he's going through right now, but I don't want him to hurt anymore. He made it very clear in his video that he wants to move on from this and be separated from this whole situation. So let him have that and let me have the same. It absolutely breaks my heart to see people saying negative things about me interacting with my fans based on this situation. I love talking to my fans. I love interacting with my fans. My fans are many different ages. So yes, there are some teenagers, but there's also adults. I love supporting them, supporting their passion. There's a difference between hiring a fan and having a 16 year old post tweets for you because even though the Miranda Sings character is a character, it's still representative of who Colleen is. And so I understand the thought of like, oh, I've hired different fans to do different things for me before. We'll give it a test run. But it just, it, again, it seems like this is just a really bad judgment call learning about them in the same way that you like to do that for me. To me, you aren't just my fans, you're my friends. We all have seen me cry way too many times on this channel about things I probably should have kept to myself. I definitely overshare and I have definitely overshared with fans when they have asked me what's wrong or asked me how I'm feeling or try to console me when I'm feeling down. I definitely have overshared in the past with them and talked with them. A That's not okay. I mean, we're all human and we all have emotional needs, but she shouldn't be talking to her fans about stuff like this. You know, we all got on Gabby Hanna for the one conversation that we have evidence of where she overshared and maybe intentionally manipulated, but we can't say for sure, an underage fan. And so the same has to apply for Colleen. You should have people in your life that you can talk to about this stuff. Fans are fans. And I think maybe when you have a bit of a smaller channel, you can have a different dynamic with people and you can maybe uh, make connections that are a little bit more similar to real life friendships. And you can say, oh, I know these people, I've talked to them, they've been with me as I've grown. And so you can have a bit of a different relationship with people who were following you when, you, when your channel was really small, but at over a million followers she has like three million subscribers once you hit any sort of big number like that the dynamic is different and of course the fans are gonna ask they're gonna want to know they love you and so they want to know you're okay what you're going through what's going on what's up what are you getting into but you have that responsibility because you know that whatever you tell them, they're going to take to heart and they're going to take on and they're going to want to know more. And they're going to listen to whatever it is you have to say and most likely agree with you because they look up to you so much. And so venting or having emotionally heavy conversations with fans, it's a no. You can't do it. It's, it's just something that, especially when you have underage fans, is irresponsible, in my opinion. A little too much when I should have kept things to myself or talked to family or close friends instead. There are plenty of other stupid mistakes I've made in my past that I've learned from and grown from. There are plenty of other jokes I've made in my career that seemed appropriate at the time, but now I realize were never appropriate to begin with. I've learned from these things and I will continue to learn from them and grow from them to become the best me that I can possibly be. I've lived my life on the internet for you guys all to watch for over 12 years. I love my job, but one of the difficult parts of my job is that I am very much put underneath the microscope and any and all mistakes I ever make are definitely shown and blasted to thousands and sometimes millions of people all over the world. That's not an easy thing to deal with. However, I'm really grateful for that. Over the past 12 years, you guys have been really wonderful, helping me learn and grow to be a better person. You've given me helpful critiques, educated me when I was ignorant, told me how to say things more appropriately, and I can't even tell you how grateful I am for that. Because of you, I have become a better person. The person I am today is a 
33-year-old mother is not the person I was when I started YouTube so many years ago. But over the last month, I've received a lot of criticism okay. that isn't the type of constructive criticism I've received over the last decade. It is more just hateful and cruel, and the things that are being said about me are absolutely horrendous. No, I should have never sent a fan underwear. How stupid am I? No, I definitely should have never given him access to my Twitter account. And no, I shouldn't have talked to him as often as I did. But I am not a monster, I am not a groomer, and I shouldn't kill myself. Be careful with the words you choose to use yeah, because yeah, I no. have learned time and time again that words definitely matter and your words can hurt people and they- Yeah, th that's just an overarching thing of Twitter. I think it's Twitter is best used in limited, sporadic amounts. Like, you should not be spending all your time on Twitter because the toxicity on there, the negativity, the harshness, it's brutal. It's a rough place. And so I, I don't think that's a type of insult that should ever be used. It's even, even if you don't mean it, if you're just like saying it flippantly, it matters. What you, like I've said this time and time again, what you say matters. The words you use matter. You create your reality with the types of things that you say. And it, it's not okay to tell someone to kill themselves. And so I, I feel bad that she's getting this type of response because I know that there are most likely people on there telling her that. I don't think she's a predator. I don't think she should have to read those things about herself. But I do think she was manipulative. And I don't understand why she approached a young fan about certain things. Did she actually talk to Adam about her divorce? Did she? Because that's not okay. This isn't a mistake. Consistently and continually talking to an underage fan about deeply personal matters that are a very, very heavy emotional load is not a mistake. It's a choice and it's a pattern of behavior. And it is manipulative. You know, we had this conversation in the live video about how this resembles pretty closely grooming behavior and how grooming isn't always sexual so it's important to make that distinction because that's where people's minds typically go when you hear that but some of this behavior is grooming and again not sexual but kind of love bombing and then pulling back and and giving him access to things and then saying oh I'm really upset that you did that you can't do that even though she did it you know, publicly she took the fall for it and I commend her for that. I think there are a lot of things that she did well. I think that addressing the videos in the past is, you know, this is the best that she can do. Like the best apology is changed behavior. And so if she's learned, we got to let her learn and change. But this, this continual thing that happened over the course of four to five years so far, isn't a mistake. It's something about who you are and so maybe that's a deeper topic maybe it requires a little bit more work and a little bit more effort and you can't just come on here in a gray hoodie and say oh it was a mistake sometimes i overshare with fans because it's a bit more serious than that they can affect people in a very negative way and i just hope that that's a lesson we can all learn in this situation i never meant to cause anyone who feels affected by this any pain we're in the middle of a global pandemic and it is scary and i just want to say i am so sorry if this situation made any of you feel more stressed or uncomfortable or sad than you already do because of all the horrible things that are currently going on in our world i love you guys thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and i will see you very soon okay overall thoughts Despite the fact that she is wearing the classic apology outfit, if she had addressed everything that we wanted her to address in this video, this apology would have been ace. Like, she would have knocked it out of the park. She took responsibility for things. She explained why they happened, why they got taken down, why she's learned, how she's grown, what she's thinking now and the place that she's in now, and she's apologized. Like, that is what we want when we see these apology videos. Problem is, I don't think she took enough time on the Adam situation. A lot of those other things that she discussed should have been addressed. You know, they weren't okay, and it's important that she comes on and apologizes for it, and I'm, I'm not gonna hold those things against her. What I care about, though, is why you're approaching a minor. 
who you have no relation to and who is a fan of yours to talk about these things, to talk about your divorce and to have you look for drama. Like she didn't even bring up those two things. How Adam said, Colleen used to ask me to look for drama about her and about her divorce. And she used to tell me about her divorce. That, those are the two big ones that I care about and that most people care about. You know, when it comes to letting him run her Twitter for a day, I can kind of see where she was at. I don't think I would have made the same decision, but I can't say it because I've never been in the same position. When it comes to the underwear, I can pretty confidently say I would never do that. And I don't know a time in my life when I would have thought it was funny to do that. But hey, maybe she just has a different sense of humor. She has since said, that was stupid. Oh my God, what was I thinking? So I think she realizes that it was dumb. Those things we can kind of move past. What I really want to know is why are you approaching an underage fan about adult topics? I said previously in the video that she should not be engaging with fans about things that are too personal and I stand by it. And I think it's especially worse when this fan is a kid, like a literal child. There's no reason for you to be having conversations, like full on friendly conversations with a child. There just isn't. It might sound like that's kind of like a mean thing to say of like, oh, well, this kid, you know, loves her so much, like, you know, she should just ignore her fans. No, but there has to be an understanding. There has to be this boundary. And I think that's why cancel culture is so prevalent in the YouTube space because the lines are so blurred. And at some point, Fans think that they know this creator better than they do. They think they have a deeper relationship with this creator than they actually do. And so they feel hurt and they feel betrayed when something comes out. You know, a bad joke, a rumor, betrayal of a friend, something shady that they shouldn't have been doing, any, any kind of mistake when it comes out, the fans feel betrayed and they lash out emotionally. And that is part of the toxicity that we experience here. So as an adult, and as a creator, it is Colleen's job to do what she can to minimize that. It is her job to draw the line. Because she said, I think of you like we're friends. You're not friends with three million people. You're not. She has a responsibility to draw the line. I'm going to step down off of my soapbox now and turn it over to you. I would love to hear what you have to say, what you think about this apology. Did she address the things that you wanted her to address? Do you feel like the things that she did address, she did adequately? Do you forgive her? Do you not? Tell me all the tea down below. While you're doing that, you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel. That would be incredible. And if you have subscribed already, thank you so much. I am so appreciative of you. And I love being able to just sit here hang out with you and talk about whatever. With all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and let you go. Thank you so much for watching. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.